Hi everyone, I'm Seamus and I have a problem. Hi, Hi Seamus. Seamus! So, I'm addicted to the MCU. I mean, I just made an entire video comparing a god-awful Disney sequel to MCU movies and I don't know why. And more importantly, I don't really know where this bit is going, so let's just let's just get into the video. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was really good. And to be honest, I don't think Marvel can do wrong at this stage, which to be clear, I wasn't always in this position. I was fully in the boat. We needed an MCU break after Endgame. Mostly because I just thought they were going to keep going on and on and on because they announced about a million movies that were coming out after it. And I know they were planning on taking a bit of a break, but let's be real, they weren't really until the unprecedented times happened. It had been 18 months since my last Marvel fix at the start of this year, and let's just say I'm addicted again, and if you don't think I'm going to be making videos about every single MCU project for the foreseeable future, you clearly don't realize what's coming next. I'm not joking when it comes to Loki. I fully expect it to be the best TV show ever made. Matter of fact, I'm manifesting it. And with that said, this isn't going to be as much of a review of Falcon and the Winter Soldier today as it is going to be me talking about one thing in particular that I really like. There's this one specific scene that really spoke to me. I can't promise you they're not using a VPN. I was like, yo, okay, if you're using a VPN, it sure as hell best be Surfshark, today's sponsor. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you're trying to start an uprising in New York, for some reason, Surfshark is the VPN for you. As it works on an unlimited number of devices, it's extremely intuitive and easy to use as in one click and you're connected. Perfect! Again, if you're out in New York City trying to start an uprising. And of course, being a virtual private network is designed to guarantee your instant online safety by encrypting your personal information and sending you alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised using their hack lock system. And I mean, if you want to use it for non-uprising purposes, their feature to change locations is perfect when it comes to trying to access content on streaming services that isn't available in your country. So, for example, if you're from the UK and are in another country but still want to watch the Disney Plus series you've been streaming but it isn't available over there because they don't have Star, bam! Change your location back to the UK and it's right there! Or, probably more likely, you're not on holiday but still want to watch something that's not available in your country, you can change your location and access that content back in the comfort of your own home, making it easier to watch what you want to watch and you might even end up saving money because you realise the things you want to watch are available on other streaming services you're already paying for in other countries and therefore you don't need to be subscribed to as many streaming services as you're subscribed to. And if this sounds of any interest to you, make sure to use my code GORMAN, G-O-R-M-A-N, for a massive 83% off, plus an extra three months for free. And a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's literally no risk. Link in the description down below. Checking out would help out the channel a lot. And I guess I should apologize, that was a good segue, but this scene wasn't actually the one thing in particular that I liked and wanted to talk about, because that title belongs to none other than John Walker. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You like John Walker? Ugh, how dare you, Seamus? I trusted you and you just let everyone down. You know what? I'm not even gonna bother unsubscribing to your channel. Just delete it. Delete your channel and be done with it. And you know what? That's a fair and rational response to that initial statement. But to be clear, I don't like his character personally. More like how his character was done. He's an antagonist who was written basically just so the audience could have someone to hate and make a stronger case for Sam being the next Captain America, or, you know, anyone, if this is the only other one, so just please go away. And I actually tweeted the other day saying he reminded me of Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter, and a lot of people agreed with that, so... I'm gonna roll with it. You see, Umbridge isn't the most evil character in Harry Potter. She doesn't kill anyone throughout the series or ever even get reprimanded for her actions, to my knowledge. But if you ever ask a Harry Potter fan who's the character they hate the most, they will almost always say her. Like 99% of the time. You know, you've got this guy that actively killed the main character's parents and wanted to lead a campaign of genocide on non-magic people in the world, but they'll tell you they wanted this word I'm not going to say because I want to keep this video monetized, dead more. And essentially, it's because she's more relatably hateable. My absolute and deepest condolences to anyone who's actually had their parents murdered, but the vast majority of us have never nor will ever have to deal with someone like that in our lives. Whereas a teacher that's just despicable, treating our students horribly and genuinely a bad person, we can relate to. Obviously, and hopefully, Umbridge is a more exaggerated version of some teacher or boss we've all had to deal with in our lives. Meaning whenever Harry is interacting with her, we can really understand what he's feeling rather than just trying to put ourselves in his shoes like in the case of Voldemort. And for that reason, Umbridge is genuinely one of my favourite characters in the series, and particularly Imelda Staunton's portrayal of her in the films is just 
perfect. She made the world hate this character, which is essentially the entire point. And just to reiterate, I didn't like her personally, I just liked how she was done. And then on the contrary, when it comes to the MCU, I really stopped to think, and when I asked who's the MCU character I hate the most, no one in particular came to mind. Like, Thanos, I guess? But he's not relatably hateable or even meant to be just irrationally evil. There's a logic to what he's doing, even though he's an idiot who killed everyone. Or, you know, half of everyone. And just hearing Umbridge's name makes my blood boil and I get angry and... When I hear Thanos, I'm like, oh yeah, he's a cool villain. And I even asked some of my friends who the MCU character they hate the most is, and I got a range of results from heroes that they don't find interesting to bad villains, and maybe I don't have enough friends for that to be a big enough sample size to get a concrete result. But my takeaway was, the MCU just doesn't really have a villain written with no other intention than to be hated by the audience, and... That's where John Walker comes in. Because right from the moment his character is introduced, I think I can speak for all of us when I say we were seething. Unless you didn't like Chris Evans's Captain America, or maybe white supremacists? I don't know, his entire character is supposed to represent white privilege, right? So if you're racist, you probably thought he was the good guy. And when you realized he wasn't actually going to be the good guy in this story, that probably annoyed you. And I'm glad because you're an awful person and please stop watching my channel. Like, not only did Captain America have a brilliant trilogy of films in the MCU, some would correctly argue the best, but he had a place in our hearts. An almost perfect character who could do no wrong, leaving a legacy impossible to live up to, meaning it felt appropriate at the start of the series when Sam gave up the shield. And then when this random guy who we've never met before shows up with the shield at the end of the episode, and again, as an ever-present reminder of he's only got into this position for one reason and one reason only, we're obviously gonna be mad, like, he didn't even have to say a single line to become one of the most hated Marvel characters to date, and this is by no means trying to take away from Wyatt Russell's performance, which in my opinion is the best performance in the entire series. Where Umbridge represents that teacher that you hated or maybe even were afraid of, John Walker more represents a bully that just seems to get away with murder. Quite literally, that's foreshadowing. And it creates this situation where we can really easily put ourselves in the shoes of Sam and Bucky while they're dealing with this. Pratt, who always gets his way despite being awful. And I think this is really well written, specifically into episode 2, to instill a reaction into the audience without seeming like that's what they're trying to do. So, for example, when they properly introduce him, they try to make it seem like he isn't that bad a guy. And this, in my opinion, is a complete misdirection. They don't want us to sympathise with his character. What narrative purpose would that serve, particularly in hindsight of what happens later? No, the writers aren't idiots. They know we want to hate this character. He's the bad guy, but how do they succeed where other MCU villains have failed. Simple. Make us think they want us to like him. And this, at least from what I saw, received the exact anticipated response. Anger. We don't want to like this character. Don't try to sell us on his free medals of honor. Awards in counter-terrorism and hostage situations off the charts. Body Sam literally helped save the world on multiple occasions. Was there for the Battle of Wakanda, the Battle of Avengers Tower, and Steve picked him personally to be the next Captain America. He's the true Captain America. This man is a fraud. And pair that together with just the blatantly on-the-nose white privilege later on in the episode, where he has the influence to get both Sam and Bucky released from police custody after they are unfairly pulled over and arrested, showing he is more respected by both law enforcement and the government than Sam, who, I don't need to remind you, helped save the world on multiple occasions. For no apparent reason. Okay, no, there is an apparent reason. It's because he's white, and I've got to give the MCU some credit for telling a hard-hitting story that's topical to society. Like, are you guys clapping with me, or...? Am I just clapping on my own in a room? Right. Well done, MCU. You did good. And yeah, it's in episode four where he finally shows his true colours, giving us the payoff for our resentment towards his character that we've been waiting for, but it's not that moment. Yes, killing someone with Captain America's shield is very bad, but the moment where he showed he wasn't fit to tie Captain America's laces, no, not even fit to tie the laces of the guy that ties Captain America's laces. I'm not even sure he's fit to tie the laces of the guy who ties the laces of the guy who ties the laces of the guy. Like, the moment I'm referring to is when he takes the serum. And it's very cleverly set up throughout this episode. Zemo asks Sam if he was given the opportunity, would he take the serum? And he resoundingly says no, because he understands that he doesn't need to take the serum to be the hero people need. Captain America was never about brute 
quote-unquote strength, but just genuinely a good person that people could look up to and aspire to be like. Whereas when John Walker and Lamar Hoskins simultaneously have this same conversation, you can tell he doesn't understand that. He believes he can't live up to Steve's legacy because he's not a super soldier and not as strong as him, showing he clearly didn't watch the first Captain America film. It's about who you are, not what you are, John. So when the opportunity arises, he steals the serum. And, well, we all know what happens next. Like, if you didn't hate him before this moment, somehow killing someone with Captain America's shield, a symbol for hope, is probably enough reason to join us. And not only this, but he literally gets away with it. Talk about getting away with murder. Like, he genuinely gets the punishment equivalent of a slap on the wrist. The government give him an other than honorable discharge, which... I don't know what that means. You think I speak American military? All I'm seeing is a genuine danger to society walking out a free man when he should be behind bars. And then he still had the audacity to feel entitled enough to argue that he was the one being treated unfairly, claiming that he is Captain America. Oh my God, I actually hate this man. Anyway, it's in the meantime of all of this that the main story is going on with the Flag Smashers. And strangely, I found the primary antagonist, Carly, much more easy to sympathise with than John Walker. I completely understood why she wanted what she wanted and where she was coming from, and personally loved the scene where Sam actually tries to help talk her through her problems as opposed to, you know, violence. And to be honest, I'd completely forgotten that that's what Sam did before becoming the Falcon. So bringing it back and actually working it into Sam's story on a few occasions didn't just surprise me, but was actually a really clever story. Storytelling. And for a moment, it seemed like she was going to be swayed. There was clearly good in her until John Walker came along and ruined everything. Sorry, it's good for the story that happened because it gives Carly a reason not to trust Sam as it all builds up to this one last big battle. And I feel like a lot of people will argue that this episode redeems John Walker quite a bit. And I'll agree to the extent that he's the least hateable in this episode at least, but it's still very on the nose why Sam embodies everything Captain America is while he represents what he is not. He wants to fight Carly because her actions led to his friend dying. His mission is vengeance, or he'd probably argue justice, but that's not what Captain America's about. Even when he loses his best friend, which happened to Steve Rogers a lot. Whereas Sam truly understands that the shield is Captain America's main piece of armor because he isn't about attacking people. The shield is there for self-defense. And in his final fight with Carly, he shows why he is Captain America, pretty much mirroring one of my favorite scenes in the MCU, where Steve refuses to fight Bucky, even if it kills him. He's not going to fight her, and even though everyone else sees her as this villain, he doesn't see the worst in her. And the series then closes, not with a fight, but a beautiful speech from Sam, which we can apply to the world we're living in today. The antagonists weren't entirely wrong and we can't treat them as if they were unredeemably evil because there's evil on both sides and it really left me thinking. He's pretty good then. Which, do you see that symmetry? And yeah, I guess that wraps up my video on why I hated John Walker but also thought he was a great and different addition to the MCU and now he's the US agent man. I'm not even gonna pretend I know what that is, but I'm excited that the prospect of his annoying Harry Kane looking punchable face could be back in the MCU soon. And I guess that's the end of another MCU video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for the Loki video or Black Widow. I don't know which one's gonna come first. Probably Black Widow actually, I don't, I, who knows? Subscribe for that and watch another video, which I've got a video on WandaVision, you could watch that. And I've also got a Patreon you could support me on. And this is the worst outro I've ever done. That's not even true. I've done a lot worse outros than this.